Let's look at how to solve a length contraction problem now. So we do it the same way as we do with time dilation. We want to figure out what is the length uh, that's measured by an observer in the reference frame, what's the length measured by an outside observer, and then what's the velocity of the motion uh, in the problem. So for this one here, we're going to have L, L0, and V. So again, L is measured by uh, from an outside reference frame or an outside perspective. L0 is in the reference frame with the object uh, so that you're at rest and it's at rest. Again, whether or not you're actually at rest is inconsequential. It's does it look at rest and do you look at rest? And then V is the velocity of the observation. So in this case, um, I want to fit a three meter car in a one meter box. So the car is actually three meters long. That's how long the car is. If I stood next to the car and used a ruler, that's how long the car would be if I'm in reference frame with it. That means that's L naught. And the car uh, and the, the box is one meter long. So I want the car to look like it's a meter long, okay, in order for it to fit in the box. So that means that the observed reference frame some, for someone who's not next to the car moving would be one meter. Okay, and the velocity that we're trying to get is V. So you'll notice that this is backwards from what the previous problem was. So the previous problem, the time t naught was smaller than t, and in this one, the length l naught is larger than l. And you may be wondering why that is. Well, it's called time dilation. That means that the, uh, the measured time from an outside perspective is dilated, which means larger than the time that's measured, the proper time measured in reference frame with whatever's going on. This is called length contraction. That means that the measured length of an outside reference frame is going to be smaller, contracted, than what it would be in the reference frame with the object. So this actually makes perfect sense. The observed uh, proper length would be three meters, but the measured uh, contracted length would be one meter. Okay, so the equation is L equals L naught times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. So plug the numbers in. So L is 1. L naught is 3. Square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Again, notice I'm not plugging in the value for C. I'm just leaving it as C. Divide 3 to both sides. That gives you a third. So 0.3 for those of you who prefer decimals. Now, at this point, you're probably saying, well, I don't know what to do next. Well, you can't solve for v until you get rid of the square. And you can't get rid of the square until you deal with c squared. And you can't deal with c squared until you deal with this one. And you can't deal with this one until you get rid of the square root. So in other words, in other, instead of freaking out about the whole thing, just do one step at a time. Get rid of the square first. So getting rid of the square root is squaring both sides. When I do that, I get 0.1 repeating. And that's equal to 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now I need to get rid of that 1. So we're going to subtract 1 to both sides. When you do that, you get 0.8 repeating, essentially 0.889. Okay, so we get uh, negative 0.89 equals negative v squared over c squared. I'm going to go ahead and drop that negative sign because it's on both sides. So if I divided both sides by negative 1, it would cancel those negatives out. At this point, I'm going to multiply c squared to both sides. Again, I'm leaving it as c squared. So that gives me 0.89c squared equals v squared. And the last step here is to square root both sides. So square root the 0.89. Uh, when you do, you get 0.942, uh, so I'll round that to 0.94, and when you square c squared, you get just c. So here's your final answer, v equals 0.94c. So in order for a 3 meter long car to look like it's a meter long, you would need to travel at 94% the speed of light. So, you know, standard, standard uh, pickup truck speeds.